In this video, I want to cover uh, uh, some Excel uh, features. Um, one of them is about navigating, and the other one is about locating. So, uh, first, as in Microsoft Word, th there is a find uh, feature in Excel that will allow you to find a variety of things. Now, uh, you may not think that this is very handy very often. However, um, I can tell you that I use find and replace on a regular basis, um, looking for a specific number oftentimes and wanting to replace it with a different number. Uh, for example, I have a budget spreadsheet, and if one of my monthly bills uh, happens to go up, which of course happens all of the time, I would find the amount that I'm currently estimating, uh, and then I would replace all of those um, with the new amount that, that will be occurring. So uh, just give it some thought to understand that it exists, and then apply it, use it when you want. So I've just called up the dialog box for fi find and replace. And there are many options as far as when you when you find and uh, if you don't click this button you, you don't really see much you, you only see find what right so I would ask to see everything so that's a good start so this way you see the entire menu and what's available to you you can type anything you want in here you can type a number right you can have it find next right and it'll find that number now I'm looking within the sheet I could have asked for the entire book uh, I can search by columns, I can search by rows. I've never really understood what the difference is there. Uh, you can look in formulas, values, or, or comments, okay? Um, you can ask to match the case or the entire cell contents. Now, when I'm working in a spreadsheet, I would ask for entire cell comment, uh, content because if it's $150 and, and three cents, then I want to match exactly 150 and three. Otherwise, it'll find any occurrence of 150. So it could be 10,150, and it'll find that. So I find this to be very practical very often. Um, the other thing, uh, into some not so um, common things, is you can actually just look for formatting. So if you're looking for things that are bold and red, let's say. So on purpose, I did two things in here that are bold and red. So they want you to know, and I want to, I need to cover that, uh, you can spe specify the format. But this is a neat little option, if you're ever going to use it, is I can click this, and you get this little eyedrop thing. Whenever you get an eyedrop thing in any application, it means just click on a sample. So here I'm saying click, I'm going to look for anything that's that formatting. All right? So it's it's identify what the formatting is of that cell and now when I go find next it automatically found the other cell that's got the same formatting. Uh, I don't have any use for this in the real world yet but at least I know that it exists. When you come back to find and replace it it, it has a, a really good memory for some reason you so you sometimes need to clear what you had before before you start over so keep that in mind. Uh, one more thing on the finding things. Uh, one of the things I've used in Excel for years is the ability to uh, name a range of cells, uh, especially if you've got a really big um, spreadsheet and, and with several areas. It, it's very beneficial. So I'm going to show you the way I've been doing it for years. These are my employees right here. These are my employee numbers. Uh, and if anytime I want to go back to this group of cells, um, I can. So I've just selected that right now. And then you simply come into the name box and you give that a name. So I'm going to call that that range of cell employees and then hit enter. And now I can be anywhere on another spreadsheet, right? Somewhere far away. And whenever I want to go back there, I just click it. And it's taking me back to week one and that range of cells. Very handy feature. Um, there's another way of doing it, which I never remember how. I think it's in formulas and define name, right? But I, I don't know why you would come here where you can just simply do it from any ribbon and you just come in here, right? So you select the range you want and then you give it a name. Now I've already so I've already named this area title, so it snaps to there. And I've already named this area employees, so it snaps to there. Um, the, the find and replace doesn't work for named areas, at least not that I was able to find. Uh, not that it needs to, because anytime you want to go, you simply come to your named ranges. So this is very similar to bookmarks uh, in Microsoft Word. Very, very similar, uh, if not exactly the same. 
Now, on the topic of bookmarks, the reason we created bookmarks in Word is, again, so that we can easily navigate and find things uh, in our document that we're looking for. Uh, there's also a go-to here. So there's a go-to uh, in this uh, program. And you'll notice that the uh, named ranges, both of them that I have, are there. So there's a named range for employees, and there's one for title, and that will automatically go to that. Um, once again, referencing Microsoft Word, we used... Uh, bookmarks uh, also so that we can hyperlink to them. So that leads me into the next topic, which is hyperlinks. So you can set up hyperlinks in this program as well. You can hyperlink to a website, right? And the, and the best, fastest way to set up a hyperlink, I think, is just to type it in or to copy and paste it in. So let's say you, you wanted to uh, hyperlink to Microsoft. As soon as you type that in, it guesses that that's what you want is a hyperlink there. And if you want to go there, you would simply control and click and that would bring you to Microsoft.com. So there's uh, a very quick, easy way to, uh, to set up a hyperlink. I'm just going to delete that. So if you want to hyperlink to any website, you can do it that way. Um, you can also go to insert and call up the hyperlink menu, which you need to understand anyway. So I'm going to bring that up. Uh, once again, it's very similar to that of Word. Now, uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to go through this menu uh, with you. Uh, here, rather than, if, let's say you were going to Microsoft, rather than type www.microsoft, you can just say Microsoft, right? So that the title is a little bit smaller. And you could type the URL, the www, down here, and it would automatically go there. So that's one way of doing it, very easy and simple. So this goes to a web page. However, if you want to link to a document, to another, to any document, it could be a Word document, it could be a PowerPoint, it could be anything, uh, you can set up a link to another document from here. Now, this is a very handy, popular thing to do, uh, as long as you understand the people who are opening this file need to have access to the folder in which the file that you're linking to happens to be. Um, so this within an office setting is actually very popular. So if you're referencing another document and, and you want people to be able to get to it quickly with, a, with one click of the mouse, that's what you would do. So keep that in mind. So those two, incredibly handy. The third that I find incredibly handy, once again, when you're working in a big workbook, now understand a workbook can have several worksheets. Uh, it can have several hundred worksheets and the, the sheets can be massive. So you may be often referencing an area that is far away or, or difficult to find, in which case you can use hyperlinks to let, allow people to jump to whatever it is that you're talking about. Now, you can, you can link to any of the sheets that you have. So in this particular workbook, I have 13 sheets. And also, back to the uh, named ranges here, if you've identified named ranges, you can simply click on that. And now you're going to have a hyperlink that will link to that, right? So they'll be able to get there from the named range, of course, uh, or from the hyperlink. Again, you're just making it that much easier for people to navigate and to find things within your document. Uh, third, uh, I've never actually had any use for this. Um, however, you need to know that you can, you can set up a hyperlink that will link to a document that doesn't yet exist. So this will give you a hyperlink and a brand new document. And, and I guess when you, when you do this, It'll ask you what the name of the document is going to be, and then it's going to ask you whether or not you want to edit this document now or whether you want to edit it later. Never, ever use that, but you need to know it exists. And the other thing, of course, is you can go to an email address, which will launch the email um, function. And if people click on it, it, but again, your computer's got to be, or your network's got to be set up to be able to do that automatically. Not all computers uh, or networks are set up to do that properly but I needed to cover it. You need to know that this exists. So the ability to insert hyperlinks in Excel uh, to do a variety of things, you need to understand what they all do and, and why you would use them.